Okay, welcome back to the channel. Hobby One Kenobi. Today we're going to talk a little bit about washes, what they are, and how we do them. A wash is essentially thinned paint that has been applied on the model and will create shadows and also slightly change the color. And for washes, we use oils. And as you can see here in the photo, I have six different oils. And to thin them, we're going to thin them with terpenoid. And as you can see here, I have six colors. And these six colors will allow me to produce any color that I could possibly imagine. Okay, so looking at the model here, I'm going to want to pick a color that is slightly darker than this green, and that'll allow us to create essentially a shadow. So I'm thinking along the lines of a black and a brown, somewhere in between. So I'm going to take those two oil colors, here's the brown and the black, and I'm going to place a little bit of each of these colors in this cup here, and I'm going to pour some of this terpenoid thinner. We might call this white spirit. Okay, so the consistency that we're looking for between the thinner and the oil paints is often described as being the consistency of milk. So we want the color to be present, but we want it to be fairly liquidy. And I'm going to rub up against the, the wall of the cup here to kind of see how well it's blending. I'm gonna to need to blend it more. You wanna get rid of any of these large chunks. And I need to add a little bit more black to it to make it a little bit darker. Again, the effect I'm going for is not really a brown color, it's more of a kind of a, a shadowy color. And I'm gonna dab on the cardboard here to see if it's the right thickness. It's looking pretty good, and it's well mixed. And I'm dabbing inside the cup here to see how well it runs around a raised surface. All right, so now we're going to apply it to the model. And at first I'm gonna add just a little bit at a time just to make sure that the color is looking right. Again, I'm trying to make the effect of a shadow. If I were to look at the real vehicle under natural sunlight, we would see shadows under these surfaces, under the ribbing, all over the vehicle. A vehicle this scale, even under sunlight, does not produce the same kind of shadow, so we need to replicate those in order for our eyes to be convinced that we're looking at something that is full scale. This is really what makes a model look not as if it were a toy, but as a small version of the real thing. So now I'm going to start adding quite a bit more. I like to add quite a bit more around surfaces, around areas that would normally collect grime and soot and mud and oils from the vehicle or gasoline. And the wheel wells are good places for that. Okay, so now I'm going to fast forward through the process so you get an idea just how messy this is. If you do happen to own a heat gun or a hair dryer, I would highly recommend using one to speed up the dry time. So now comes the real fun part. We get to reveal what the model is going to look like. I'm going to remove about 95% of this, and it's important to think of this as just merely one layer of weathering. This is not the end-all be-all. And it's important for me to figure out how I want to remove this. I typically like to go against, against the grain, so to speak. I want much of the material to stay underneath, so if I were to swipe left to right, I would actually end up removing most of it, and then there would be no purpose to doing this in the first place. So I want to kind of keep the wash in the crevices. As you can see, with the Q-tip, I am rolling the Q-tip as I remove the material. I don't want to just spread it around.
So we're going to stop the video here, and in part 9 you'll see much more of the vehicle. Thanks again for watching, please subscribe.